Well, okay, quick review of natural selection that it is the environment as a force that is affecting phenotypes, right? It's called the short haired critters die, the long haired critters have more vigor. But the change that happens over time is one, it's a change in allele frequency. The long hair allele gets more common, the short hair allele gets less common. You wrote that down already, right? Then I wanted to make sure you understood the effect of the foxes being bred for tameness. Did you write this down as well? Oh, good. All right. I wasn't it was a little fuzzy. Cool. Let's talk evidence. Um, when people first started really thinking and understanding how evolution worked, when Darwin came up with his two big ideas, it was it was a new way of thinking about living things. And so it was very difficult to see evolution actually happening, right? It was really hard to see in living species, especially ones that take a long time to live and have babies and die. It's a thing that happens across generations. So it's not something you can look at right now if you're just learning how to look at it. And so for a very long time, okay, for a long time in science, you know, for 50 to 100 years, what we basically had as far as evidence for evolution was the fossil. Now, when I say fossil record, I mean something fairly specific. If you think of science as not only a way of doing things, which it is, But if you also think of scientific knowledge as a body of knowledge that the world basically shares, the fossil record is like that. The fossil record is the knowledge that all the fossils that have been detected. It's a record of how living things have changed over time. And it includes all the fossils we've ever found. Not a lot of fossils. Great. And lots of evidence of once living but now extinct organisms that give us this sort of overall picture of, yeah, okay, here's what it looks like the dominant species were 600 million years ago, 400 million years ago, a billion years ago. We can use fossil evidence to say this is at least. Some of the stuff we know is there. There's gaps. Fossils don't tell us everything. We'll talk about those gaps here in a minute. Um, looking at fossils eventually leads you to the conclusion, it sounds kind of grim, but really shouldn't, that most of the species that have existed on Earth are extinct now. Most of the fossils we find are of living things that you can't find them alive here anymore. That sounds weird and kind of depressing. It shouldn't. It's like saying most of the most of the people that have lived on this planet are dead now. Duh. Right? People have been here for thousands of years. Obviously, we only live for a hundred max. Most of us that have lived are dead. It's the same with species. Species have a lifespan, typically. Species exist, and then either they go extinct or they change enough that they're not that species anymore. It makes sense that most of the species that have existed aren't in existence anymore. But it's interesting to think about, right? It gives you a sort of a sense of scale that you don't always have. Uh, what's fun about paleontology, what's fun about <clears throat> studying evolution, is we have this constant source of checking whether people are being good scientists and using that second T in content. Because we haven't found all the fossils. New fossils are constantly being found. And every so often, one of those fossils contradicts something we thought we absolutely knew to be true. 
we knew that the continents didn't move, that they were fixed in their position on the earth. And then they started finding fern fossils in Antarctica. They started finding matching fossils on the east and west coast of, you know, continents that were halfway across the world from each other. And eventually the theory of plate tectonics was generated and is the best way we can explain how the continents work now. They're on plates and the plates move. And it explains all kinds of other stuff too. Nobody believed it at first, right? A lot of people basically denied that the continents move because I can't see it moving. It's not right in front of my face. How can that be true, right? We do that a lot with humans. We knew that dinosaurs were cold-blooded, slow-moving lizards. That's why we called them dinosaurs. Soar means lizard, thunder lizard. And then somebody found Archaeopteryx, a fossil of a dinosaur that had feathers. A lot of people didn't believe that. That's a fake fossil. You made that up. It's plaster. Uh, but now it turns out that dinosaurs are basically the direct ancestors of birds. Birds are what dinosaurs turned into, which means the fastest living thing on the planet is a little dinosaur that can fly up to 200 miles an hour and mostly eats other dinosaurs. Peregrine falcon. Anyway. Yeah, so it's fossils. Although the thing about fossils is, um, I don't know if lucky is the right word, but like it's really hard. It's not common for living things to get fossilized. For every living thing in history that got fossilized, there were billions that did. You're not going to be a fossil. Okay, you would have to be incredibly lucky to be a fossil. The way we bury our dead does not lend itself to fossilizing. So you'd almost have to have it be a freak accident and you wind up buried between two layers of sediment in the right situation, the right earth conditions that your hard parts, and by the way, having hard parts as a species, having hard parts ups your chances. Having an exoskeleton or an endoskeleton really helps. Your bones basically have to be replaced by the right minerals in the right way so that there's a stone replica of your bones that lasts, right? That's what happened to all these fossils that we find. So you gotta be pretty lucky and there are huge gaps where, you know, we, we, you hear people talk about the missing link. Well, that's because there's gaps and we're always looking for ways to fill in those gaps to see what those missing links look like. Um, but every once in a while we get lucky, and there's a, a lineage that we have really good fossils of. We get every step along the way. And it turns out horses are one of those things. Horses, we have lots of the intermediates fossilized where we can see a pretty good picture of horses going from something that really didn't look like a horse to what we know as the horse today. And that's what you get to play with today. You are going to get a slideshow dropped into your Google Classroom. Each of you is going to get a slideshow that has all those fossils. I think there's seven or eight, but they're all mixed up. And you don't get any context. You just get the photos of these fossils. And you are gonna have to figure out what order these fossils evolved in. You're gonna stack, you're gonna rearrange the slides from oldest to most recent. So oldest will be at the top of the slideshow. And then horse, will be at the bottom. And then you're gonna to have to answer some questions about how you did that. In other words, you better be keying in on specific traits of these fossilized skeletons to make your decisions. And I wanna know what those traits were and what you think they tell you about how these forest ancestors live. So let me get this dropped in there. You guys all log in. It's a digital assignment. It's a nice way to introduce fossils.